Hey guys, I'm Amit Kumar and welcome to this video in which we will discuss about using Apex with Developer Console. Now the Developer Console is an IDE or Integrated Development Environment with a collection of tools for developers. The Developer Console supports writing code through which we can add code with source code editor, compiling code with help of which we can auto compile on save, reports, compilation errors as well. Now debugging. Uh, view debug logs and set checkpoints so that we can perform the debugging operation testing we can run specific or all tests together we can view test results and the code coverage it is providing to us performance checking we can inspect debug logs for performance issues and we can improve over there SQL queries we can perform SQL queries we can query our data and we can view result with query editor color coding it uses color schemes for easier readability and auto completion for class and method names so these are the various features or these are the various supports that are provided to us from the developer console and hence it makes it a better option than the normal Salesforce UI. Now we can open the developer console in any of the following ways and these ways are available only if it is permitted to our current user as well as to our org. The first method is click on the gear icon from any page and click on developer console option. The second method is go to the setup page, go to the type apex class in quick find box, click on apex classes and click on developer console. So it's pretty much of talk. Now let's see things practically. Hey guys, so here we are in our org and now let's see how to open the developer console. The first method is click on this gear icon and then click on the developer console option that will open the developer console in a new browser window and from there you can definitely access the developer console as per your need. The second option is go to the setup page where we currently are and type in apex class or simply apex over here click on apex classes and here you will get a developer console button click on that and that will take us to the developer console interface. Now uh, on the developer console interface, you will get few options in the form of menu bar and few options here in form of tabs. So you can clearly see, you can see logs, you can see tests and test results. You can see checkpoints. You can see query editor where you will type in the SQL or SOSL query. You can see states of various variables, their types, their values, uh, the progress, current progress while debugging it is very helpful as well as you can see various problems while you are saving your apex code now to create or to open an existing apex class so let's see how to open an existing apex class if you remember we have already created a sample class in our previous video let's try to open it so to do that click on file option click on open and here you will get various entity types. So if you want to open triggers, pages, page components, objects, static resources, or any package, you can use these options. But right now we are going to open classes. So click on classes. All the existing classes will be named here. You can certainly use this filter to search for any specific class and this is useful if there are plenty of classes already available to us. You can hide the managed package classes by clicking on this checkbox but this is something that we will discuss later on. You can definitely use refresh option and open button to open that class. So let's select this class and click on open. And this is going to open that class. You can clearly see the API version we have used and you can choose for any of the API version, but here you will see only the five previous API versions. Now, if you want to add something over here, you can certainly do that. So let me add a small method. Uh, so I'm naming it as public static void show and opening closing brace. So I'm intentionally committing a mistake over here. I'm removing this void and I'm trying to save this. And you can see an exclamation mark over here, which represents an error. You can also see in the problems tab, it is showing two and you can see an asterisk over here in the file name. Now the asterisk means the file is not saved yet. So let's go to the problems and let's see what are the problems that is there. So it is 
saying two issues first static is not allowed on constructor second invalid constructor name show so uh, because we have removed the return type that is void this particular class or this particular id is thinking that i want to create a constructor so it is showing two error first the static is not allowed in the constructor so if i will remove the static and i will try to save this definitely it's going to remove one of the problems but the second problem is still existing it is saying show is not a valid constructor name because a valid constructor name should be same as of class name now this is something we will discuss later on but to remove the error i'm putting back the void because i want to create a method and i'm saving this and now because all the problems are resolved you can see there is nothing in the problems tab and the asterisk is gone that means this particular class have been saved if you want to create a new class you can click on file you can click on new you can click on apex class then after and you can see there is an option of apex trigger as well so if you want to create any apex class or any apex trigger you will find it in the new option so i'm clicking on apex class i'm providing a name to it uh, as like hello apex and i'm clicking on okay so you can see it has created a class for me and it has added few things already there with the class name and the access specifier and the class keyword so definitely this IDE auto completes few things you can see each element is in different color shade and you can also see the numbers over here and one more interesting thing is you can definitely collapse the code block so the code block starts with this opening brace and closing brace so you can certainly collapse them for example if I want to collapse the method only I can collapse that and that increases the readability if we if there are a lot and lot of codes available in our class now if we want to delete any of the classes we can do that by going to file and click on delete and it will ask me that whether i want to delete the current class in which i am right now so i click yes and the class is deleted and so do i can delete this one as well so click on delete it will ask me a confirmation yes and both the classes are deleted you're going to uh, file open and just give a refresh over here and you can see in the classes no class is existing right now so that's how we use the developer console for adding apex class and apex triggers for our salesforce arc that marks the end of this video see you soon in the next video till then thank you and take care